We are here to craft and I'm wearing what we're crafting today. So we're making an MLK Day shirt so you all can actually make this. If you got a t-shirt floating around, I, we personally have like a whole two or three bins of shirts just like chilling so we can make mm -hmm. a shirt whenever we want. Um, but we are gonna be doing a little pocket design and then this is the back. Let me move my ponytail. Lauren, can you read the quote? It says, I have decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden to bear. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, there you I go. I love it. I love it. Me too. So we are going to make an MLK quote shirt. Um, I hope you guys are excited. We are going to be using multiple colors of vinyl. Now last week we learned how to layer HTV so I feel like we're kind of going in reverse but there are lots of good tips that you can learn and take away from layering multi-colored vinyl not necessarily on top of each other um, but just using multiple colors in a singular design. So that's what we're going to be going over today. You don't need a whole lot of supplies. Obviously you're going to need the vinyl and I did link all the different shades like the skin tone shades I linked below that I used as well as this pale yellow shirt. I love this shirt because it's almost another skin tone. Yeah. Um, so I just think it looks really cool. This would look, I love that it's monochromatic. Yes. So we did have a friend ask what brand shirt, sweater, and hoodies do y'all prefer? If you're asking us, I, and especially mm -hmm. when it comes to t-shirts, my go-to for a t-shirt is going to be a comfort color. Me too. Every time. Or I don't a know canva. Why. I love a, can a Bella canvas. Bella canvas is really good. Yeah. Um, as far as sweatshirts go, I don't think you can beat a, a classic Hanes or a classic mm. Gildan sweatshirt. I was hoping you said Hanes. That's my favorite. Honestly. And I'm a big comfort color shirt girly, mm -hmm. but I'm not a huge comfort color sweatshirt girly. Yeah, they're more... They're not like sweatshirty. They're like thick. They're like, like a really thick, almost rough material. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of the comfort color sweatshirts, but I am yeah. highly, highly a fan of an original Hanes yes, or, or Gildan. original Gildan sweatshirt. Yes, period. That's me too. Period. So... You're gonna need, um, we're using a comfort color shirt today. If we can go overhead, I'll show you all all the supplies. So this color, I'm not 100% sure on the name of it. I wanna say it's just like ivory. Yeah. Um, but it is 100% uh, cotton. So we are using 100% cotton today. Um, like I said previously, if you are putting HTV on shirts, you need to be pre-washing them so that when the shirt gets washed, it doesn't shrink. I had some comments on the last video that said they never had issues. If you haven't, that's fine, but I always err on the side of caution when I'm working with yeah. shirts that I'm making for people because mm -hmm. you don't want them to get home and like you haven't pre-washed your shirt and they wash it and it shrivels up their design. It's just not gonna be good for anybody. So um, this is 100% cotton, so you definitely wanna wash it because cotton does shrink. And then I've got our HTVs here. So we've got a dark brown, we have a little bit lighter, and then we have this like hazelnut color and then we have a light apricot color. So you see, we've got these and you don't have to have these exact ones. Um, if you wanted, I mean, you can literally, if you wanted to do like rainbow colors, you could do that. Whatever you've that got. That would be really cute. When it, with this quote, I feel like it would fit. It fits. For so everything. if you're wanting to do more of like a pride shirt, you can, um, but I love just using the skin tones for this one. And then we have our standard grip mats. I've got a t-shirt guide and I have our heat press. We're going to be using our mini easy press. Oh, that was the heat press that I cut on accident. Well, we're going to use it. <laughs> we kind of, we are hard on our Cricut heat mats. They yeah, all are. look so <laughs> rough. Yeah. Um, but this one's like, can I, you, you think I'll be okay? It'll be fine. I use it all the time. Oh, okay. It's I fine. just accidentally cut, I was trying to cut something with a true control knife and mm. Cut, cut a right bit through. too much pressure. Didn't cut through the padding, just literally the top layer. You just of that. got excited. It's Ooh. okay. <laughs> so uh, you need a heat mat. You don't need a heat mat, but a heat mat is very helpful. And then I'm using the Cricut Mini Easy Press today. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. These heat up so fast, though. I you don't have to do it super early. Um, and I'm gonna put it on the medium heat setting, and we'll just set that to the side. If you're using a bigger heat press, that's like three seventy five. 350, yeah. 375-ish yeah. mm -hmm. for the medium heat setting. Yep. And then um, I've got a true control knife, a weeding tool, a pin pin tool. If you're new to the Cricut world, this is like a little teeny tiny weeding tool. So it has a little needle at the top. These are so good for weeding intricate designs, which we are gonna be doing today. And then I've got a burnishing tool. 
okay? So like simple things you're probably gonna have laying around already. Um, I feel like whenever you first get into cricketing, making HTV t-shirts is like, it's like a rite of passage, right. basically. Mm -hmm. um, so let's go ahead and hop into Design Space. Let's go ahead and start working on this t-shirt. I don't want to keep y'all forever. Um, but right here, I've already got everything laid out. So this is gonna be our end result, okay? So we're gonna start from the very top. I'm not just gonna go in and cut this and y'all have to figure it out on your own. No, no, I'm gonna teach you exactly what I did to achieve this result. So we're just gonna scoop this on over here and I'm gonna go ahead and snag my fonts as well as my images. I like to have all of my elements before I start designing. That's the way I like to do things. So, oh, for sure. Yeah, it's just easier, like, if you can see everything, uh -huh. you know? So we're gonna be using the Power Fist. I'm gonna go ahead and download that. It's gonna pop into a zip folder. If you don't see it for some reason, just go to your finder and look in your downloads, or like the search bar and look in your downloads, and then you can see it pops right there. Then we're gonna open up Cricut Design Space, go to your uploads over here on this left panel, and then I'm gonna hit upload image, and we're just gonna drag and drop that SVG in, and then you're gonna upload it. Now it's in Design Space, but we need to click it and add it to our canvas, okay? Beautiful, I'm just gonna set them right there. Now yep. we need to go get our font, so we are using a uh, Nomad and Inventor today. Now, if you've already got Gypsy downloaded on your computer, Gypsy and Nomad are the same thing. So, either way. So, let's go find our fonts. Actually, I pulled them up. I already pulled them up. <laughs> Look. Looky there. So, if you're downloading a font, it's the same thing. Just hit that little download icon. It's going to go into a zip folder. And then for the fonts, you've got to double click on that .otf file, and then we're going to install the font. So it's installed on our computer, and then I'm gonna go ahead and snag that Inventor font as well. Hit download. It's gonna go into a zip folder. We're gonna click on the .otf font or file, and then install the font, okay? Um, and we do go over all of these uploading fonts, uploading images in our 30 Days to Master Your Cricut. When you become a member, that is in your resources. So, or, I'm sorry, is it in resources or is it in classes? I'm blanking. What? How to The 30 Days to Master Your Cricut. It's in courses, but it's also you can find the, the um, book, the and, book resources. and resources. Okay, that's why mm -hmm. my brain was yep. crossing wires there for a second. Um, so you all can actually go watch that 30 days to master your cricket and you can complete that within those free seven days. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. um, it's, but we break down everything so you can get in there. And if you're like, well, she went way too fast how on how to download that font or that file, we go real slow over there. Okay. Yeah. Cause we want you to, you know, walk with us and really learn how to do it. Um, so if you're feeling like, oh my gosh, I can't think that fast, it's totally fine. So, um, I am going to save my project. I just saved it okay. up here on the top, save, save, and then I'm going to reload design space. So to make sure that my fonts actually go into design space. I saw a couple questions while that's reloading. Patty doesn't understand the power fist and the quote. This is an MLK junior quote. It is MLK day, Martin Luther King day. Um, the power fist just represent unity. So yeah. unity amongst races, amongst different beliefs. Amongst everyone. Yes. Unity. So it's just like a universal symbol for unity. So yes. that's why we're using that today. So now I've got my power fist in, okay? My fonts should now be in because I reloaded Design Space and I had already downloaded them to my computer. So let's open a text box and I'm just gonna type in uh, Martin Luther King. That's wild. We did have a vet said, I have Cricut access. I used a font last year that was free and now this year I don't have access to that font because it has a price on it. There you go. That's wild. That's That would be, yeah. That's so, just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we keep preaching to you guys. If you get the MGO membership and you, if you downloaded that font last year from us and then you canceled with us, you would still have that font. Okay. Lisa so. says, I wish I would have found MGL in the beginning. I have so many designs that I use Cricut Access files, oh. so they can't stop now. 
I that think, stinks though. I know. I mean, to I, I know that because we design stuff constant. If I used their files and they took them away from me and I'd spent like hours on something, I would mm -hmm. be like devastated. So, yeah. Okay, so this is gonna be in the inventor font. So we're just gonna double click into that text box. It'll highlight our text. And then you're gonna find your downloaded fonts under the system tab, okay? So everything, every font you download from us is gonna live under there, even not from us. So we're gonna be using this font for that. And y'all, I need to see this quote again because I just can't be remembering. Okay, I'm gonna open another text box pull it over here. I'm going to go ahead and change this one to our Nomad font and all of the stuff that we're using today is linked below. So all these fonts and files and supplies are linked below. So if you do decide to jump, jump in on that free trial, you get 20 downloads and you can, this can be three of them. Yeah. And yeah. let me tell you, these three are good ones to go with. Listen, I use uh, this Nomad font all the time. Religious. I have to like make myself use other fonts because this is like one of my favorite ones. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and type this out. Now, I'm just going to type it into one text box right now, and I'm going to show you all how to break it apart and put it to different colors. So right now, we just have one solid text box. It's all going to be the standard gray color, which is how it comes in. One so th let me show you guys what we're <laughs> working with here. Okay. I'm trying to move all this stuff over. So I want to just look at our text right now. So we have, okay. Sorry. What's going on? <laughs> it keeps zooming into the wrong thing. Oh. I don't want it to zoom into. Okay, here we go. So we have our singular text box. This is what it would look like if I just typed it out. Y'all, that is that a That looks hot, terrible. That, yeah, that's <laughs> a hot mess, okay? We want to get here. So you're like, how? How? Tell how me. did Alicia get there? How do you get there? Tell me. Let me, let me just fill you in. I'm going to give you some good tips. If you're taking notes, get your pens out. Okay, the first thing that we want to do is separate all of these lines to individual text boxes. And the reason we want to do that is because look at all this overlapping text. Like it's just, it's a Mod Podge. It's mm -hmm. not cute. It's not cute. So select your text box. We're going to go to advanced, ungroup to lines. This is going to make every single line where I've hit enter, it's going to make a new text box. And so now you can see, oh, I must not have hit it. There we go. Okay, now look. All of these can be moved. They're free to roam. Okay. Yep. So looks already looks so much better, doesn't it? Because we've spaced already. It out. Yeah. So that is one little tip. Now let me zoom in to this guy over here. I want to show you guys what I did. And I want you to really get close up look. Okay, looky here. You see this? You see what I did here? Would you just look okay, at this? Okay, okay. I was like real confused there for a minute. Like mm -hmm. I just thought you were just overlapping, but you're not. You're no, not. Okay. I would never. I would never. I know. So, I should have not. I should have. I should have. You should have had me. faith in you. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is basically get our text exactly where we want it in terms of where we want it <coughs> lined up. And then I'm going to show you a little quick hack to make sure that your words look neat and separated um, rather than just straight up overlapping everything, which you could do. But when you start getting into multiple colors, it's not going to like it's going to lay over top of the other colors, which is going to you're going to be able to see like a little bump and it's probably just going to be little. You wouldn't really be able to tell that much, but it just bothers me. So I'm going to show you how to fix it. So what you're gonna do, if you've zoned out, zone back in. I'm gonna give you guys a little lesson today. So let's just get really close and personal with this, okay? Let's make sure everything is exactly where we want it. It doesn't have to be perfectly in the middle, especially with this messy script that looks handwritten almost. This looks like someone wrote it, which is what I love about this font. Um, but I'm just kind of staggering it a little bit, nothing crazy. It's still relatively centered, but it looks like someone wrote it with their own handwriting. And so 
There's a couple places where it's overlapping, particularly down here. And honestly, it does not overlap in many other places, but right here between the T and the G, when you start doing multiple colors and multiple layers of vinyl, this gets real lumpy. Like every time that shade of brown passes over the other shade of brown, you're gonna have a little mark where the letter is underneath it. Do you know what I'm saying? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this bottom line of text, okay? And we're gonna add an offset. Now stay with me. So we're gonna add a very tiny offset, 0.25, way too big. I'm thinking like 0.05, hit the tab key before you hit apply, hit tab. That's gonna give you a preview of the offset. You can see I didn't hit apply, just hit tab. And then it's just still giving me that little blue outline. I feel as if it could be a little bit bigger. Let's do 0.07, hit the tab key, beautiful. That's where I want it. So I'm gonna hit apply there, okay? So my offset is selected. The reason I know that is because in my layers panel it says offset. I need to slice this offset into this height is too great. I need to slice it into that. So I'm gonna really use my layers panel over here, okay? I really want to commit to this layers panel because it's gonna help me. It's like I wish we could zoom in and the only thing they could see is the layers panel. I know, I know, I know. Maybe one of these days will be that fancy. Yeah. So <laughs> you wanna use <coughs> offset and then this height is too great. What I'm gonna do to grab both of these layers, since the offset is already selected on its own, I'm gonna hit the shift key and then I'm gonna hit hate is too great, okay? When you're slicing, you're only gonna be able to slice into two layers. We need to use the slice function here. We cannot use any of the other combined functions in this instance. So I need to select both layers. I'm gonna go down here to the bottom right where it says slice and we're gonna select that. And you're gonna see it's gonna start to look a little crazy. So we have like this whole, the offset came to the front and oh my gosh, what's happening? Well, let's just start getting rid of the layers that we don't need. So we don't need that. We, I'm gonna just click right there and hit delete. It looks like I didn't do anything, but I am deleting these layers. And look at this, y'all. Let me zoom in. Looky. Do you see how much oh, cleaner that is? Yes. It's just a little thing that you can do to elevate your work. It really is. It's the devils in the details, the truly. Mm -hmm. Truly, it's, it. it's things like this. It's just a, the tiny details mm -hmm. that you do make the world a difference. And that is one that you would have never thought. Right. But it's very, very important. Now we did have a friend, <clears throat> Alyssa asked, can you, um, can you also do multicolor by putting different color HTV and strips on your mat? I mean, you can, you, yeah. You can, but with this one where they're so close together, mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't. But yes, right. it is possible, especially if you are using the same material. I am going to show you guys how to cut these out multiple colors on one mat today. I'm going to show you how to do that. Yeah. So um, now that we've got that, I don't feel like I need to do it anywhere else. Like we did it. Even it even went onto this D. You can see just the corner of that D. Mm -hmm. Not only is that going to help it look better, it's going to help you line it up. Yep. That's exactly what I was thinking. It's going to help you line it back up, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, like, these ones don't have it up here, but we what we'll do is start from the bottom and work our way up. Yeah. Start up from the bottom, now we're here. Start okay. up from the bottom, now we're here. Okay. <laughs> start up from the bottom, now we got to stop now. Lauren is dancing. <laughs> it's happening. Okay, I'm going to bring... Martin Luther King Jr. down here. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Y'all, this gets real little. So I'm going to show you. You want to know what would be really cute with that? What? Letter spacing. Make it. Oh, did I do that? Make the. I, I did it. I was about to say. I think you, you did. know me. I know you. You know. You know my heart. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what Lauren just said is the letter spacing. Letter spacing is like a design element that we like to use a lot around here to give things a more modern touch. Yes. That's how it feels to me. It's very, it gives it a more trendy, like modern look. And uh -huh. it may seem silly to some, 
but it just, like we're saying, devil's in the details, those little things really make it look better. So yep. what you're gonna do, select your text box. So we've just got our Martin Luther King Jr. selected. And then up here, we have letter space. Now you can manually adjust this like that, or you can just go in here and top in a number. Like let's put in three. Mm. I, mm, is that I too like, much? No, I think I like, but you do have a, I don't know that, do you need the comma for junior? King, do I? I don't Should know. we Google it? I want it to be correct. I would. Martin Luther King Jr. I don't think you do. <laughs> you don't. I don't. No. I put it on my shirt. Why did I do that? I don't know. Okay, well, I'm glad you said something. Okay, let's yeah. take this out. You can remove HTV from your shirts by putting the mini easy press from the inside and then plucking it off. So I can yeah. pluck off that little uh, comma. It'll be okay. Okay, beautiful. Now, if you are designing this shirt on your own, I don't want to see any of this, okay? No, no. It needs to be either the width of your design or, or a little, little bit smaller. smaller. Yeah. Now, also, uh, let's go the other direction. I don't want to see any of like it being like way, like y'all, we have to cut this out of vinyl, okay? Yeah. So you don't want it to be like way, 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 way too small. So let's just bring her up. I think I want people to know who said it, but I don't want it to be like, hey, because hey. like, it's going to look crazy. So we're just going to put that there. Now listen, Linda, listen, listen. Mm -hmm. If you are cutting text this small and y'all, you probably can't tell from my shirt, but this font is very thin. Like on these sans serif fonts, they can get really skinny, like on the U and the A. What I like to do when I'm needing to weed things like this is add an offset, or some people call it a cutting box. You could just put a square around this if you wanted to. I'm gonna put an offset on mine, like a, like a point, let's see a point two offset. No, bigger, like a 0.25. I want it to be one continuous box, so let's do 0.3. Oh, perfect. Okay, I'm gonna apply that. Let me change the color just so y'all can like see what the heck I'm doing. So now when I go to weed this, I don't have to weed the whole big old thing. I can just weed right around it and it just makes weeding intricate cuts a lot easier, okay? That's just a little hack that I use sometimes. Um, and I am going to attach them. You do have to attach it if yeah. you want that to work. Because it's not going to go, it'll separate itself if we don't. One thing that my favorite part about um, using that hack specifically is when mm -hmm. it comes to like permanent vinyl. It's Especially. phenomenal with permanent vinyl. Yes. And you know what, Lauren? I'm looking at this and I'm still worried because it's real skinny. I Bef think it's fine. Did you have a hard time with it last time? Yeah. Well, like you can't, the, so the skinny parts of my letters like tried to rip. And tried to tear. Yeah. So I'm going to do a like small offset to make the letters thicker. Okay. okay. So right now I'm just going to select this word, just the word. I'm going to add an offset, like a 0 0.02 offset, 0 0.02. See, very tiny. You can't even see, you can't even hardly tell a difference. I'm gonna hit apply, and we're just gonna keep the black version and get rid of the gray version, okay? I just want that black. So this is the ac actually just the offset. Yeah, we it got just, rid of the text. Yeah, and it made it much thicker, and so it's gonna look a lot better, okay? And then I'm gonna attach it again so everything cuts where it needs. And look how okay. much thicker those letters are. I agree, yeah. I agree, I like it. It's just gonna be better and easier to weed whenever we go to do it. Right. Okay, so we've got that now. We need to make sure we have everything cutting out on the correct colors. Now you can put these colors in whatever order you want. I'm just gonna stick to what I have over here. So we're gonna start with our darkest brown. Let's see, actually right here, I've got that dark brown. And then I'm gonna go a shade lighter and then go to the next text box. We're gonna go even lighter. And then we've got this one down here, which is that light apricot color. And then I did Martin Luther King in the dark brown, just to reflect. So it kind of pulls the whole design together because that's the one that we used at the top. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and so you kind of can't see the Martin Luther King down here, but that's okay. It's totally fine. And actually, I'm going to shrink it down just a hair. <laughs> okay, everything is looking good. What do y'all think? Do y'all have any questions so far? We're about to resize and start cutting. Okay. Love. Love it. Love it. Okay, now we need to um, see how big our design needs to be. Okay, and then we're going to do our little power fist, and then we'll cut. So... It's hard judgment on the back of your t-shirt, like where to put it. I measure with, I pick with my heart, um, which is a horrible advice. Oh. Um, because like you can't, I don't think the t-shirt guide's no. really going to, I mean, kind of. You kind of want it like. Mid, mid arms, the top of it to be around the mid arm section. Like if yes. you go out to where the sleeves are yeah. and the top of your design starts about the midpoint of that yeah. is a good rule. I, that's a good, we should just marry that rule. Yeah, just midpoint of the sleeves. Yeah. Now, if you're like, I don't have a t-shirt guide, you can just fold this over like mid sleeve and, and like take your little press all we need is like a little guideline, y'all. We just need a little guideline. This is what's great about having these little mini easy presses. Look, there's a line there for us. Yep, that's where you could start. Yep. Also, the name is not centered in design space right now, y'all. It's just because we can center it when we get to go to press it. It's not that big of a deal that it's not centered in design yes. space. Yeah, because all this stuff we're going to have to lay separately anyways. Yeah. It's not going to be cutting out where it is um, because we are using multiple colors. Now... Um, let's measure to see how big we need to make it. You know what I did? I Hulk smashed our oh, measuring tape. <laughs> Give me two seconds. I literally smashed our measuring tape the other day. I do be throwing stuff sometimes, like on accident. It just slips out of my fingers. We need a t-shirt guide for the back. Yeah, Karen, that's a good idea. They probably have back t-shirt guides, I would think. Okay. So, obviously, like... You're not going to want to make your t-shirt design the whole width of your shirt or the whole height of your shirt. I mean, unless that's like the look, but it's not the look for us today. So I kind of go maybe about mid shoulder too. Yeah, mid shoulder is going to be about the, as wide as you want to go. You don't want to go any bigger than that. So 11 wide. Let's go into design space. I'm going to select everything. You need to be resizing everything together. And we need to make sure that this is locked. If it looks like that, it is unlocked and it is not ready to be resized. It will not be proportionate and it will look awful. So make sure it's locked. The width needs to be 11. And that's going to make our, it will automatically adjust your height so it's proportional. So it's going to adjust it to 8.3. Okay. So that's about the size, and you can see that's almost exactly what we did over here. Yeah. So that's it for resizing that part, okay? I'm going to hide. I'm just going to delete that. Also, we'll, we don't Patty has asked a couple times what is Snap Mat. Snap, snap Mat is just a, um, it is a feature that you can use in Design Space from your phone where you literally just take a picture of the mat and, and place you things place. where the color of the vinyl is. It's, it's not, not my a great favorite. Feature. It's not a great it's feature. It's there. You can use it. It's not my favorite, but that's what it is. The idea of Snap Mat is amazing. Yes. The actual function of Snap Mat is awful. It is so, uh, you would not believe. <laughs> oh, I know. We tried yeah. to do a full, before they upgraded the print and cut size, um, we tried to do a full print, print and cut paper sheet. You would have to like stand on a stool and like stand over the mat and like <laughs> it was so picky. So we just never, we just don't ever use that feature anymore. But it is a cool idea. Just not, not great. Okay. Bef now let's flip our shirt over. We need to measure our pocket because we're fixing to do our fists. So we need to make a square and like there's little seams right here. I don't really want it coming all the way out. I kind of want it like right inside of that seam. So let's make a four inch square. Let's go back to design space. I'm just going to go to basic shapes and we're going to pull in a square that's going to mimic our pocket and I'm going to make it four inches, excuse me. And then let me zoom in. Y'all know I like to work from a thousand miles away. 
And so now we need to make sure your shape is locked. We're going to shrink this down. And then we are going to duplicate three times. And we may have to resize after we place these if it's still too big. And I think it's going to be just a little bit too big. But what you can do before that, before you resize, is select all of these. We're going to go to Align and Distribute Horizontally. It doesn't look like it did much, but now they're equally spaced, and that makes my heart so happy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so then you can come in and shrink these down. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful. And then we just need to change the, change color. the colors. Yeah. So I'm just going to select each one. And honestly, we have to put them on individually anyways, like we were saying. So it doesn't really matter if I distributed them equally. But we still like it. <laughs> it makes my design heart happy because I can like see what it's going to look like. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So then we can delete our little square. We don't need them anymore. Now, if you're going to make a bunch of these, keep your, keep your guidelines so you can know. I'm going to delete this old one. Now, we have all of our elements. Let's zoom out, okay? Let me bring my little power fists over here. So everything is done now. Look at it. This is our finished product. Beautiful. Okay. Now we're going to go, we're using the Explore 3 today. Uh, you can make this with pretty much any of the Cricut machines. And you can see all of our brown stuff, all of the, each of the colors, it separates onto its own mat. Okay. Mm -hmm. First of all, I keep saying I need to do this, but I'm going to change this to 12 by 12 mat. I'm just going to go in my settings and change it right now. I think you have to go back out. I and do. Back in. I'm going to show you guys. Let me show you. If, you're, if your design space keeps doing this, and I know it does because ours does it all the time, and you're like, why does it keep snapping to a 24 inch mat? Go to your settings, and then we're going to go to load type and change your load type to 12 by 12. Okay. And hit done. And watch. Let's go back to make. It's going to be on a 12 by 12 mat. Look, beautiful. Oh, love it. <laughs> so much easier than having to go and change it. Because, like, no one's using a 24-inch mat on a daily basis, right? No. So, we're using heat transfer vinyl, which means it has a built-in carrier sheet, and we need to cut it from the back side. So, we're cutting the vinyl from the back and the carrier sheet is built in, so we need to mirror our image in Design Space. Anytime you're working with HTV, you need to mirror, okay? If you're using regular adhesive vinyl, you do not need to mirror. But this is going to reflect our image, and we need to do it on all of them. So I'm just going to work my way down. Now, if some things in it, like if you don't want your fist all the way over here, I like to move all my stuff to the top left side, uh, personally, and then, yeah. There you go. Beautiful. Beautiful. If you want to look at it without the grid, you can just click on it and it makes it a blank screen. And then we're going to select continue. This thing is Megan Irk here because she's not telling me about our little bouncy thing. Normally what? she's like that little icon that keeps bouncing. Oh. She's normally the one that's <laughs> like, hey, can you like close that bouncy thing out? Okay. So when you're looking for cutting heat transfer vinyl. You are not going to find it under heat transfer vinyl. You're not going to find it under HTV. For some reason, you're going to find it under everyday iron-on. Now, if that bothers you, you can change the names of these, um, but we just remember everyday iron-on. That's what we use. Mm -hmm. Default pressure. So we're just using a standard fine point blade for this. Um, now, I did say that I was going to show you all how to cut more than one color on a mat. Would you guys like to see that? Yeah, I think yeah. Okay, um, let's do two per mat. So I think two per mat is a good place. To a good start. place to start, yeah. right? So you're you're not overwhelmed because we could probably technically squeeze all these on a mat, but I, I wouldn't. We're not gonna do that. So I'm gonna cancel. Okay, you can't do it from that screen, but I can do it from this screen. Yes. So what I'm gonna do? I've got my brown mat here. Well, let's say I want to cut this stuff on the same mat. What you can do, and used to, you would have to individually move each of these, but I can select both images. Y'all, just let's take a minute. Do that again. You all can click and drag and select multiple images on the mat mm -hmm. to move them together. Yeah. Just like you can in Design Space, y'all. Yep. I think that 
it took me a while to learn that. And well, they didn't do that. it. They only had it. I think they did it like six months ago. Yeah, but still, like, I feel like I should have known it six months ago. I know. It is, it's I, a good You know upgrade. me. I'm, I'm moving and saving time and material any yes. chance I get. Me too. I like to be putting as much as I can on one mat, honestly. Because yep. I don't want to send it through a bunch of times. Right. So select both. And then these three little dots right here, you're going to select those and hit move object. Now, there is a hide selected if you need to hide something you don't want to cut. Um, but in this instance, we are moving the text to our brown mat. Dark brown. So we're going to move it. Yeah, dark brown. <laughs> we're using different shades of brown. So when it first comes in, it's going to come in on top of everything. Don't click off of this because it has what you moved selected automatically. Uh -huh. I'm just going to move this down. Now it did. It did leave the power mm -hmm. fist. It did leave my power fist. That's okay. You can still put it in that corner. Yeah. Oh, here. Let's put, put it over here. Okay. So now let's go overhead. So now what I need to do is put my dark brown up here and my immediate, my second shade of brown on the bottom. And in design oh, space. people didn't know you could click and drag and move multiple things at one time. Well, there you go. There you go. So we're learning. In, there's a lot of good little tips in this. Yep. There's a lot of good little information. So in we're here. back in design space. Yeah, we're back in design space. So now I need to make sure that my dark brown vinyl is at least four inches. I would even, yeah, because four is good. Yeah, four inches is going to cover right there. So then on my mat, I'm just going to put this to the top of my border. Okay, take your burnishing tool. Make sure it's burnished all the way down. You can see my four mark is right there. Now, some people get crazy with it, and they'll get like a little paper trimmer. Uh, we just like to grab our X-Acto knife and wing it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we're just going to go straight, you know, as straight, <laughs> as straight as you possibly can. So when it comes to cutting straight, one of the things that I have learned, and I can't remember where I, what I heard this on. So first thing I do, which I, I don't know about you guys, but I love to watch those pinstriping car videos yes uh, they're my favorite yes I love so those too. i was watching them and they always use their pinky as like a guide yeah so i started doing that that helped but also when you are cutting something if you want to cut a straight line you look at where you want to cut not where you're currently cutting <laughs> you keep your eye on where you want to cut and that's the same with like what i i think it was a painting class it was like if you want to draw a straight line you don't watch your your paint or you don't watch your paintbrush yeah you watch where you want to go and use your pinky as a guide and just straight okay well i've got to cut this one so we'll do okay. that but before we cut it look let's overhead let's look I'm, what I'm, yeah, I'm you, overhead. You see what happened? What happened? Uh, yeah. You okay, have. let's go back in the design space. Can you guys tell me what's about to happen? That fist about to get cut mm -hmm. off. So, you can just move it a little bit. Listen, you can just scooch them over, but as to the little too close for comfort, I'm going to put them over here. I'm going to put them up here, make sure he don't get chopped off. We need the whole thing, okay? Yep. So, um, you can move stuff around in design space individually as well. And I need it to be one, two, it needs to be, let's go to the eight mark. So, it needs to come to the eight mark. Now, let's do Lauren's tutorial. Pinky out. And look at where you're going, not, not at your knife. So, I want to come to here. Okay, here we go. Well, it you have a, a little bit of an arc. <laughs> <laughs> it takes some time. It takes some time. Listen, just give yourself some room. Don't like try to get it as close <laughs> as humanly possible. Okay. Oh, why am oh, I doing that? That's way not straight. <laughs> Look how much straighter. So this is like something, Lauren gave you guys a really good scientific explanation on how to do that. In my heart, I can cut, I can do it straight without, and I don't know how to explain it to you guys sometimes. Like, I know. It's, even if we were painting, I would be like, you just have to go fast. Yeah. I'm the kind, I, that would be my, I'd be like, don't think too hard, just, just do, do it. it. So you were thinking about it. Right. So I was thinking too hard and that's my problem sometimes. That's why when y'all catch me not measuring stuff, it's because if I do measure it, I'm going to mess it up. If I don't measure it, I'm going to do a lot better. And that's just me. Lauren can do things very precise, which is great for her. I wish that I was like that, but you know, it is what it is.
Yeah. So, okay, so we've got our dark brown, we've got our medium brown, and now we can cut. Let's go back to design space. We can select continue. Oh, before you go, I would probably just go ahead, or do you want to cancel it and then move your other two later? Oh, yeah, we can go. We'll do it. We'll, we'll just cut those separately. Okay. It's no biggie. Okay. So, just so you guys got a little tutorial on how to, you know, put stuff on one mat. Yeah. So we'll go continue, we're using the Explore 3, and like I said earlier, we're using Everyday Iron-On, fine point blade, it's already in there. And then, let's just load it in, uh-oh. Well, that one's dry. Is it there? <laughs> that pin's oh. dried out. Oh. Okay, ready? That's a me problem. It's okay. My we, bad. We have like a thousand cricket I things. thought it was a, I, I guess I was making that card and I thought it was a scoring wheel. Or the oh, scoring stylus. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Yes, Karen. Alicia is the queen of eyeballing. Thank you. I'm the queen of measuring. Lauren is the queen of precision. <laughs> the queen of precision. Okay. And then, so we've got everything on here. Oh, and just if you are a newbie, make sure you're putting shiny side down. Because remember, we mirrored our image. So our image is going to be cut mirrored back here. Then when we flip it over, we can stick that transfer. It's got that built-in transfer and we can stick it on our t-shirt. So... Make sure your vinyl is shiny side down or carrier sheet side down is what we like to say. Okay. Because there are HTVs that have matte carrier sheets, which no, don't do that. If you're manufacturing uh, vinyl, stop doing that. I'm sorry, y'all. This camera is crooked. Is it? It's always crooked. I don't know why. That yeah. camera always is a little better. Carol says, cut with my heart and measure with my heart. Early shitisms for sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. No doubt about it. Okay, so we did our first two shades of brown. I am going to see, I heated up my mini easy press way too soon and she turned off. So I'm gonna turn her back on to the medium heat setting and let that warm up. And then we are gonna put these on the mat here in just a moment. I'm just gonna throw that Cricut pen away. So you use it. I was about to say, let me run out here and grab you another mat and you can start putting, we're on oh, one yeah. by the way. Okay. So you can start putting those on a different mat. Um, Christine says, I have a note to remind me of that for HTV. That's a good idea. Even if you just cut it out of vinyl or put a sticky note on your uh, Cricut, just put like mirror your HTV so you don't forget. Thank you. Ooh, that's a fresh one. Fresh, fresh. Mm, I love a fresh so one. So fresh and so clean, clean. So fresh and so clean. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get this hazelnut, I guess you would call it color ready. Can anyway. we go overhead? I want to show you guys. Yeah, I'm going to weed this little tiny Martin Luther King Jr. Look how easy this is to weed because we put that bounding box around it. Oh, I love that. Isn't it satisfying? Mm -hmm. And like nothing's trying to pull up because we made our word thicker. So these are just little tips that you can use a lot. We get so many questions on like, how do you get such intricate cuts? And I'll say this, a big part of it is that we use Caesar Easy Weed. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the best vinyl for intricate cuts. It just yeah. is. Um, yeah. But also doing little tips like this help a ton too. Yep. And you just want to be super careful. Now, if you're weeding adhesive vinyl, you definitely want to be way more careful than I'm being right now. Heat transfer vinyl has this carrier sheet built in, which makes it a lot easier to weed because it's sticking to something. Because this is sticky, as you can see. Okay, but the, the vinyl is not actually sticky. The vinyl's not sticky until we apply heat to it. So the heat activates that adhesive. So we're just gonna pull all this off. I'm like very aggressively weeding, I'm sorry. <laughs> a lot of people like to weed on the mat. That is a personal choice, but um, it does help, I'll show you. We'll just lay this on here. It's kind of like your second set of hands. So. We're just gonna weed out all of these little inside pieces. And I need, normally you can have like a piece of tape or something, but lately I've just been cutting off a piece of my transfer tape and, 
<laughs> and sticking all my little pieces to it. Oops. Let me just, that's what I do. I'm such a klutz sometimes. Okay. So I'm going to pull off all these little pieces. This is where the pin pin tool really helps y'all. Mm -hmm. Um, also, if you have like a light pad, if you're bad, if you can't see well, I mean, this is a well lit room and this is hard to see when you're weeding dark colors. I'm honestly kind of just like picking and seeing where it lifts. If you want me to be honest. So we're just going to weed out all of this. Do y'all have any questions about weeding or anything about heat transfer vinyl? I know we've got lots of new beginners. Uh oh in today's uh, class. So I wanna make sure that we're answering any questions. There are no bad questions. No bad questions. No. Everybody's saying the pin pin is, the pin pin really does change the game with a lot of things. And if you don't want, you can purchase, this one specifically came from- um, 143. 143. But um, you can purchase them on Amazon, I think. And you can even make your own. Yeah, you can. I think someone said earlier they made their own. Yeah, you could take a mechanical pencil. Um, so look, what is this little piece right here? See, you got to make sure that you're getting all these pieces off because we don't want none of that. Looky there. Okay. So that's our first, first one. And then we're just going to keep weeding. And I like to use the big one for the bulk of it. And then I'll go back in with the pin pin tool for all of the middles. Um, the new print and cut size, I'm pretty sure you can print um, a, or Super BA3. Can 13, you print 13 by 19? I don't think, no, not 13 11 by, by 17, tabloid. 11 by 17. Is tabloid is the largest you can print now. Yeah. What you would just do is just go change your um, size. Yes. It used to just be 6.75 by 9.25. That was as big as you could yeah. do it. Okay. You do have to have like the wide format printer though if you were wanting to make something that big. This one I can see so much better. Oh, oh. I need to add this to the hack book. I don't know what, I was on like TikTok or Instagram. I don't know. This girl had and maybe I'm an idiot and I haven't seen this, but like we do this every day. This girl had an adhesive vinyl design and she, it was like kind of like a mandala, but it was adhesive vinyl. So it wasn't heat transfer. And to get the little pieces out, she took a piece of like this, like a piece, something sticky, even I guess you could just use tape. And instead of like weeding it out with a pin, she just stuck it and pulled it up. She would just stick it and pull it up on adhesive vinyl. Isn't that wild? Do y'all do that? If you've done that already, please tell me. I don't know why I didn't never think to do that before. I can kind of do it here. No. I think it would just work with adhesive vinyl. But I had never seen anybody do that before. I do love this text, but there are so many little intricacies and you've uh -huh. got to make sure you weed out everything and it's easy to miss this stuff. So you can see here, got a piece of brown stuck. Okay, and we are in the home stretch, y'all. So you can just stick your vinyl back down and use the mat as your third hand, we like to call it. And then you're gonna weed off all of this. Okay. Yes, I've seen that too, Megan. Megan said that where someone will take a um, lint roller mm -hmm. and roll over the pieces to pick it up, for sure. Yeah, I've seen that. I've actually tried that one, but it doesn't work. Like someone else said, wouldn't it pick up all the pieces? I'm like, yeah, it does try to. The way she did it, she just had like a little piece. So it was just like, just getting where she was touching. And I feel like that would help more. Um, but a lint roller works really good as a transfer sheet alternative. Like if you need, um, if you're out of transfer paper, you can use lint roller paper. So if you're ever needing some in a pinch. Okay. I love this color brown. I want you to know I'm trying to, you know, I'm redoing my living room. 
And I, this is why we get on side tangents because I'm weeding and we start talking about oh. random stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm reading my living room, but I'm mixing blacks and browns. I'm obsessed. I need to, I need you, I need you to come to my house and help me. Because <laughs> I'm doing it, but I'm like, I don't know if I trust my design instincts. Um, Kelly asked if we know if we can put HTV on something that has been knitted or crocheted. Mm. Um, technically, you technically could, could. Yeah. But is it going to look great? Uh, I don't know. If anything. It depends on how chunky it is. Yeah. If anything, I would do like a leather patch with an HTV on the leather. That yeah. would be cute. Because you could like stitch a leather patch on yeah. or something. Uh-huh. Okay, there's our third one. Let me take this little piece off. Sometimes it's good to look at it through the front and make sure you didn't miss anything. Like you may not see it from the back side, but then when you flip it over, mm-hmm. you can see that you missed stuff. Like I've done it. Every single one I flipped over, I've missed something. Okay. And then this is our last one. And then we will start attaching everything. Holy moly, it's hard to see this one. <laughs> I like couldn't even find where to start. Okay, I usually just kind of pick a corner and go from there. And you can see like, I just like to break it and have like two separate halves. Yeah, cool. you do also have to be careful. Randell said uh, my yarn did not do well with the heat. If you have a synthetic mm. yarn and not a cotton yarn, it will, there's a chance like, with a high heat, a synthetic yarn can melt a little easier. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Alrighty, there's our fourth one. So, everything's weeded. I'm going to cut all my little fists off. I'm just going to take scissors and cut those and set them to the side. We'll do those last. We're going to do our words first. And the great thing about HTV is you can like stack it. You can like stack your pieces and keep mm-hmm. them all together. Like I can just stack my little handprints in one little pile. And I'm actually gonna have to separate this Martin Luther King as well because it's gonna go at the bottom and my other part goes at the top. All right. Let's get organized, people. We've got all of our stuff over here. We don't need our mats. We don't need our keyboard. We just need our t-shirt, our vinyl, and our mat. So, let me lay our shirt out. Is our crease still there? Yeah. I don't know if y'all can see it, but I can see it. I'm going to actually put that top word Let's see here see you can just tear these apart which is super oh, be careful and don't do it <laughs> what did you just do i tore it i tore oh. the tip of the r it's okay though okay so i'm gonna start up here now i'm not ironing anything down yet okay I'm just going to start up here. My line's right here. I'm going to kind of put my text right through the middle of that line. Yeah. Okay. Do we feel like that's too low? No. Okay. And then um, decided to stick with love. Make sure if you've got little pieces of heat transfer vinyl on there, you're picking those off. Okay. I have a couple little scragglers over here. This is what I like to do, okay? There's, you can cut this 10 different ways. I like to lay everything out when I'm working with heat transfer vinyl first. I don't wanna iron anything on, that's just me, okay? I also wanted to start from the bottom here because that's where we did those insets on the words. So I'm just kind of, and if you stick it down, you can move it still because it's not, no heat has been applied to it yet. Yes, this is the back of the shirt. Yep, we're on the back of the shirt now. Oh gosh. 
tear this. So here is where our T goes. You can see the little line and then this right here is where the D goes. I ripped my R, just ignore, just ignore that. Is it, is my shirt crooked? Does it look crooked to you, Lauren? Like overhead? I mean, it's a little crooked in the shot, but like. This looks a little crooked to me, but look, it's all gonna stick together now. So I can kind of like move it. Where's my line? Okay. That looks better to me. Yeah. Okay, now. I'm gonna start, I've got my extra little piece over here, I'll add it here in a second, but we're gonna start with the bottom line. So what I'm gonna do is just peel this up just a little bit, okay? So it's still attached to my shirt. I need to move this so it's out of the way. Okay, now I could just leave those there, just kind of, and sit something heavy on them if you want. And I'm gonna adjust my mat so it's right underneath here. And then we're going to apply heat. You do not need a Teflon sheet or anything like that. You can just use the carrier sheet in the vinyl. And then I saw someone on our TikTok and they were like, I see people moving their press around when they're putting on vinyl. I thought you were just supposed to hold it in one place. I mean, technically you could just hold it in, like if you had a bigger press, you could just put it down on there. But with the mini easy press, I'll move it around. Yeah. I mean, it's just what I do. And you can tell when it's starting to adhere because you'll get bubbles. And y'all probably can't see them on the video, but I can see there's bubbles on top of the vinyl. And that means that it has detached from the carrier sheet and attached to the t-shirt. You can always lift up an edge too. And this heat transfer vinyl is a warm peel, meaning that you remove it while it's still warm. You don't wanna wait for it to cool down. Okay, beautiful. I'm gonna add this little piece that I ripped off. <laughs> On accident, no one's gonna know, everybody. Nobody's gonna know. No one's gonna know. They're gonna know. <laughs> Let me make sure I line it up right, gosh. Okay, here we go, people. Here we go. And I'm not touching the other vinyl for this. Look, you can't even tell. Yeah, I can't even tell. Okay, and then I'm just gonna flip this back down lines up perfect lines up perfect look at that looky there do the same thing we're going to peel this up keep it attached pull back our vinyl we're not doing right now sit something heavy on it and we're going to keep on trucking for some reason it moved like a hair and it's bothering me i didn't pull it all the way up uh -huh. and it's probably because and we talked about this the other day Vinyl will shrink a little bit sometimes when you apply heat to it. It's just natural for it to do that. Yep. And what's great about how we weeded this is that there's still a protective sheet over that previous line of text. And we do want to make sure we have something covering it, um, whether it be the carrier sheet from the line above it, or you can even use this previous carrier sheet to cover up any exposed vinyl. You just want to make sure that you're covering it and not letting the iron hit it because it will melt your vinyl for sure. So we're just making, heating this up until we can see the bubbles. And then we're gonna do, oh, I didn't go over that good enough. Okay. Randell said, my carrier sheets end up all warped when I'm done. Am I overheating it? So if you use a, an actual heat press, there's a good chance that the carrier sheets will look warped after you're done because it is a lot of heat and a lot of pressure for a long time. Yes. With the mini easy press, it doesn't get warped because you're moving that heat around and it's pretty much just attaching to the, 
You know what I mean? So it's not warping it super bad. Mm-hmm. But right. now, Tanya br asks a good question. Can you use an auto press and press all at once? You can as long as there's no portion of the carrier sheet underneath the other, like the vinyl. Right. Okay. I forgot that this vinyl gave me a hard time last time. For some reason, it's a cool pill. So I was just talking about how most HTVs are a warm to hot pill. They'll say warm pill, but you can pill them while they're a little hot. Mm -hmm. This beige color, I don't know. I linked um, Caesar Easy Weed, which is a warm pill, but whatever vinyl I'm using right now is not, and I don't know what brand it is because I, I just found it in the studio somewhere. Um, it's like not wanting to stay on the shirt. And so I think it's just because it's a cool pill. So what that means is we cannot <laughs> peel it up until it's completely cooled down. And I'm gonna use my, use the countertop. This is a good way to get your transfers to cool down yep. quicker. Or a window, a win our windows would be great right now because it's us and no It's so cold outside. It's freezing. Okay. I think it snowed about two more inches since we've been in here. Stop. We've been in here forever. Sorry this is a long tutorial. It's okay. But look how good this peels off after I've let after it cool you down. Let it cool down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's lay it back out. We are working our way up, people. Okay, I'm just going to we're gonna peel this up. Pull this one up. Just gonna kind of let that sit there and then remember you do not want to accidentally iron over the line below it so make sure just reuse your transfer tape if you need to do what you got to do you know what i'm saying yeah and be careful don't be reckless when you're ironing like me i get a little frolicky start <laughs> start touching my vinyl and sometimes when you're working with different materials that have different peel times, like right now it's doing okay, but there would be instances where this is a cool peel, this is a warm peel, and I've ironed over it. Yeah. And I'm trying to remove this one, and this one's like, I'm still hot. And yeah. so I like to work with materials that have the same peel temperature. Um, like glitter vinyl sometimes will have like a cool peel, so I like to stick with all glitter vinyl, but you don't have to. I also see a piece that I did not weed right here. Um, so Lori said, how can you tell what temperature, uh, which HDV is cool pill and warm pill? If you don't, number one, I would look at the directions that your HDV mm -hmm. has. Also, I think that top line is a little. Is it up this yes, way? Okay, yes, I, was... I was noticing that. Um, I would look at my directions, number one. Number two, once you go to peel it, I would just kind of see, like, is it... That's how I knew this one was if cool peel. If you're trying to peel it while it's warm and it's not staying, it's probably going to be a cool peel. Let it cool down. Try it again. Um, but that's how I always check. Yep. That's how I knew because that one would not stay down when it was warm. But then I let it cool down for a minute and it came off beautifully. So, um, I would recommend if you're... We'd had someone ask what leather we would recommend, Cricut or Dollar Tree for a tag on yarn, Dollar or uh, Cricut all the way. Honestly, a lot of times I feel like I don't recommend Cricut products, mm -hmm. but their yarn or their faux leather really is a very good faux leather. It is. I, it is. I, I highly, I really like it. It's a cuttable faux leather too. The Dollar Tree is just a little bit too thin for my liking. Yeah. Does that look straight? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'll just say, like, we've been chit-chatting for a while. It doesn't normally take this long to make. Like, I've no. been teaching you guys a lesson today. Yeah. Like, we have had lots of good little tidbits in here for learning purposes. Mm -hmm. So, it's not going to take y'all this long to make a shirt like this. Okay. We also have a friend say, let's say I lost the instructions and I don't know what brand I have. Is Cool Peel my safest bet always mm -hmm. it's just one of those things once i iron it down i would try to peel up a corner warm it, peel is typically what you're going to get with regular hd yes warm peel is going to be your it's going to be typical 
for normal HTV. However, sometimes it's not the case, but I would try pulling up a corner first. If my HTV is not staying down, lay it back down and then just let it cool down and try to peel it then. Yes. And then once you've done that, you can figure out if it is a cool or a warm peel and then you can label it. Mm hmm Okay, I'm just lay, laying my little fists down and like it's a little off, but I stuck them all together so I can move it. Okay. And then <clears throat> you can just individually put these on. So I'm just going to lift this up, apply a little bit of heat. And then peel it off. Okay. And then I'm just putting that transfer back down. And then lifting up this one. Oh, he moved a little bit. Don't want to iron your pocket. <laughs> yeah, don't iron your pocket. I'm just going to lift this one up and then iron it down. Yes, <clears throat> a lot of specialty materials are going to be a cool peel. Mm -hmm, that's a good point. Flock glitter, is a cool peel. Glitter is holographic. a cool peel. Um, let's see. Um, sometimes certain, like the Super Puff, is a cool peel. DTF is a cool peel. Yes. Okay, and then I'm just going to, this is our cool peel one, so I'm going to, Apply heat, let it cool down, and then we'll peel it after a second. Yes, Erica. Erica said the shirt came out lovely in so many great hacks. Listen, I love this shirt. Like, I'm so excited to wear it. Me too. I was. We're excited. making each of us one. <laughs> I know. I was like, I'm wearing that, my shirt on Monday because it's so cute. And we don't do that a lot. We don't, no. I mean, we like the shirts we make, but, like, we don't wear them a lot, if that makes sense. We, ma we, we made this one for us to wear. Yeah. For sure. Okay. Okay, guys. Ah, She's done. It. This is the back. Look how pretty. I love that. I love it. The font is beautiful. We can go overhead so you guys can get a final look at it. This is our final product. If you are, like, obsessed, I need to make this today. Make it. You can wear it. Post it in our Facebook group. If okay. you haven't signed up, we're doing the free seven-day trial. You can get into our website and get all the files for this and make it today. Yeah. I mean, everything you need is on our website. So yep. super fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this.